Hello friends, this is Scott, and it is spring cleaning time of the year. In my last video regarding the pond, I talked about how the goldfish, or the majority of the goldfish, had survived the winter. And, but look at this pond, it is a mess. Okay, we have lots of debris, lots of deciduous leaves that have fallen into the pond, so the whole bottom is kind of full of leaves, and we just got, it's just a messy, mucky mess. So, it's time to get this low-tech pond cleaned up. Again, there's no filtration system in this pond. Uh, all I have is two bubblers that keep the water moving and circulating, and I'm just planning on having goldfish in here. I'm not planning on any other types of, of critters. So I don't think that oxygen or the cleanliness not having a filter will be a problem, as I will be sucking water out of the pond too during the year to clean it, uh, also for fertilizer. That's uh, going to be a fertilizer source for my garden. So the first step is I removed a plant, and then I'm just trying to scoop out the leaves. Now, I did buy this little... There's a dead fisher, looks like. So we've, we've lost a few in here. There's some that I were unaccounted for, and, and I think I'm going to find them today. But this pond, you know, after the trees dropped their leaves, just filled this pond up with gunk, and it's just slimy. So I've got to get this all kind of scooped out. Now, when I first put the pond in, I bought this little pond skimmer, and uh, yeah, this thing sucks. It's uh, the... the the metal handle is very weak, and I can't even get up in here and, and uh, pull a lot of material out because it just bends. So the first thing i got to do is either get a better one, better net, or just reattach a different handle or something to it that stiffens it up a little bit. But anyway, I got started, and I wasn't going to change now. just try to find a different handle, so I'll just live with it. I'm also facing the challenge of trying to scoop these leaves up, but the fish that are remaining in the pond are all in the bottom. So as I'm scooping... I'm a little concerned that I'm going to be, you know, stirring up the, the bottom content so much that the water quality will be not enough for the fish to survive, but i got to do what i got to do. So in this pond, I had several pots. I think I have four pots of different types of plants, and then I had some floating plants. And the wife doesn't like the floating plants, and I heard from a friend that they're, you know, they, they tend to overwinter. They're supposed to be an annual, but they overwinter, and they end up in our uh, wetlands. So I'm not going to put those types of floating plants in anymore. But I'm just going to get rid of them and use them as fertilizer. So, But as you see here, there's just tons and tons of, uh, of leaves and scum and, and miscellaneous. So it's going to take some time. And I thought, you know, I'll just show you a little bit longer of a video. It's a nine-minute video today. It's not, not too long. But I'm just going to show you. It does take some time. Again, there is no filtration system in this pond. There's no external filter. I'm just going to clean it twice a year in the spring and in the fall. And I'm going to suck the water out of it during the year, during the growing season, and use it as a, as a fish emulsion fertilizer. So it should be fine. Now, the plants I have in here also help uh, clean the water. They filter the water by, you know, consuming the nutrients. So it should be fine, and it was fine. This, is, this pond's a year old now, and the majority of the goldfish survived. But it's not a perfect system by any means, but it is a low-tech system and a low-cost pond. And I just wanted to have a, there's a fish, you see a couple of them there. You know, I've got to make sure I'm not scooping them out. I think I did scoop one out and into the bucket, and I had to throw them back in. But they're lively, uh, the ones that are still alive. I think I probably have between 15 and 18 maybe left. I'm not sure. I think during this cleaning, I find, and I'll show you during the cleaning, I think I find three dead fish. So uh, we've lost a few. But overall, they're, they seem to be doing well, and and uh, the majority of them anyway. And I think with this pond, it's uh, once these fish grow... It's going to be too small of a pond for that many fish. I am planning on building a pond down at the hobby farm, a much bigger pond. And when I say much bigger, I'm not saying huge, but probably maybe four to six times the size of this pond. We'll see yeah, if I can get that done or not. But uh, some of these fish, if they survive, will be going to that pond probably. I don't know if I'll stock other types of fish in there. It's a very cold environment, and I think it'll freeze solid all the way to the ground. So goldfish are kind of the low-budget fish that add a little bit of a visual interest and uh, if you lose a few it's not a huge financial investment as you would with a koi and other types of fish but just look at all the slime in these in these pots i'm pulling a few out from the deeper end where the bubblers are and i'll remove the bubblers too and clean those up but i'm just trying to get uh, the majority of the floating stuff and then start scooping the bottom i'm doing each side of the pond just to give the fish room to escape a little bit uh, so i'm kind of moving around but, again, I don't know how many fish are in this pond. It's getting just real murky now as I've stirred it up. But lots of gunk, lots of, of uh, nature's goodness in here. So this will be good uh, 
good starter for some some compost fertilizer this year. So anyway, it's good to get to clean it up. It's a little bit of a pain. Again, I'm learning what tools I need in, in the future, and I think I'll use a and get a better net. Now to my side there, I have a bench, and it looks like that bench has been set there so that I can dangle my feet in the water. Well, that's not the intended place to put that bench. Uh, if you look behind, you still see some volunteer onions coming up. I had planted all the onions last year along that wall, and so I, you know, then I decided to put it in a pond, so I had to wait. So I'm going to be moving, you know, that bench over behind. I've got to level the area, make sure it's it's a good seating area, but give ourselves a little leg room and, and give us the ability to walk around the pond and actually get to the uh, the chicken uh, egg box. And it has a little hatch on the outside that I it's kind of a pain to get to now with that bench sitting there. So, so sometimes you got to leave things temporary, uh, but then you have a permanent fix in the future, and that permanent fix will be I am going to put a wall like I'm matching the other side, a, a decorative uh, brick or a block building block wall. But then I'm going to put this bench in that so that uh, it'll be give us a little more room. Yeah, and I probably spent maybe an hour cleaning this pond, so it wasn't a, a terrible amount of work, but it uh, it takes its time, especially when you don't have the right tools. Here's another dead fish. Here's a close-up. You can kind of tell when they're dead, and rather than dormant, is when their eyes are white. If you see that, there, that's a dead fish. If you see clear eyes and good color, that's probably a dormant fish. So I'll do a little speed work here. It's getting a little redundant, uh, but it took lots of scoops. I think I pulled out two buckets worth of gunk out of here. One I put on my espalier fruit tree around the, the roots, and the other one, as you'll see a little bit, I, I put in my compost bin just to help jumpstart that a little bit. But it's uh, just scoop after scoop, cleaning it up. You can also see that, uh, that my, the, sometimes the best tool is your hand. Uh, so I got a little frustrated with the, old, with the old net, and so I just decided to use the net sometimes and use my hand other times and, and scoop out the majority of the, of the junk. Again, I'm not going to get all of it, but, you know, ponds are better. It seems like when I had tropical fish, the more I tried to keep the pond clean and pristine, the more I killed the fish. So you need to have some natural biology going on in the pond, and, and uh, you see a few fish swimming around there as I'm cleaning. But uh, you need to have some of that biology. And as you see, the water level is, is dropping quite dramatically there. So I'm going to fill it up here in a little bit with some, with some water. So here's some of the sludge that, again, I, I do half my compost bin, you know, each year. So I'm going to do the uh, right side. I'm going to screen that out soon. So I'm pouring everything on the left. Now here's the bubblers I had at the bottom of the pond. This is a more, you know, it's a round bubbler. It's a little bit higher quality. And then yeah, I bought this little cheapo here and it didn't last a season. It broke. So now these here are fertilizer spikes that you, that water plants need the fertilizer. So it's so too early to tell whether these the plants in the pond survive the winter, but I'm going to go ahead and fertilize them today. And they're simple as just shoving a fertilizer block in the in the bucket, and then putting the buckets back in the water. So it should be they should be fine if if they're alive. I think they're probably a, at least a couple of them are still alive. And I went to the store, couldn't find a short little bubbler that was decent, so I bought a long one. So I'm thinking that'll help the circulation a little bit more. And I bought some water conditioner. Every time you use tap water, and I just have culinary water uh, to fill my pond up. You got to get rid of that chlorine and, and some of the other contaminants. So, you know, I probably, I guesstimated there's probably 50 to, you know, maybe 50, 75 gallons that I needed to fill here. It's hard to tell. Maybe not that much, but filled her up and I did dump, you know, approximately 100 gallons worth of capfuls of uh, of that uh, chlorine remover. So I think that should do the do the trick. I'm going to have to do a little more skimming when I'm done with this, but and let it settle for a few days, but... It'll, uh, it should clear up. It'll never be as clear as that first day when you can see the rocks on the bottom, but that's probably better. The fish uh, are safer if, they're, if there's a little bit of uh, darkness to the water and uh, you know predators can't get them so easily. But looking good. A couple days later, uh, the pond's cleared up and uh, there's no more floating fish, so we should be good. Well, thanks for watching this video, and if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you.